Welcome to Saz Talks Money on Valuetainment. I'm your host, Adam Sazik, and I'm here to help you build your wealth and save that money. On today's episode, we're going to be breaking down stock market terminology for dummies. Let's talk money. All we talk is 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 money. So question for you, how often do you turn on the TV and you watch CNBC or Bloomberg or read a newspaper or Wall Street Journal and you wonder, what the hell are these people even talking about? Well, I got to tell you something. That happens to me all the time, and I'm in the money game. So if you're not in the money game and you're not an investment strategist, financial advisor, you might hear some of these terms and be like, dude, I got no clue what this guy just said. So today, we're going to break down money in a language that you can understand, and we're going to break down stock market terminology that you should know. So with that being said, we got a list behind me. It's A through Z. We're going to go down the line of the alphabet of certain words that you should know. And of course, we're going to start with A. So A, asset allocation. This might be the most important terminology for you to know. Asset allocation, aka your asset mix. This is basically the balance between your stocks and bonds. They say, depending on your age, that's how much you should have in stocks or bonds. So as an example, if you're 25 years old, you should maybe have 75% in stocks, 25% bonds. If you're 75 years old, you should have maybe 75% in bonds and 25% in stocks. Makes sense? Asset allocation. The younger you are, the more risk you can take, that's stocks. The older you are, the less risk that you should take, that's bonds. Moving right along, let's go to B, bonds. Bonds are an IOU to a company or government. That's when you lend a company or government money, that's a bond, pretty simple. That's a bond. Next, you got bull or bear market. You always hear the bull, it's a bear market, it's a bull market, it's a bull market, it's a bear market. It's pretty simple. A bull market is when the market is going up and a bear market is when the market is going down. So that's bull versus bear. There you go. Next thing you know, you got capital gain. Capital gain is a profit from a stock sale and it's usually over one year. So you, sometimes you get taxed at ordinary income. That's income that you make in a year or a year or less capital gain is a year or longer. Next, we got compound interest. This might be my favorite thing with investing. This is your money making money and your interest making interest and your money making interest and your interest making money. Albert Einstein once said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who does not pays it. Pretty profound stuff right there from Albert Einstein. That's compound interest. Next, you got diversification. This is where you spread risk among different asset classes. You know how they say don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, that's diversification. There we go. The next thing we got is dividend. Dividend is what a company's earnings are paid to shareholders. That's collecting dividends. Next up, Dow Jones. These are the 30 largest blue chip stocks on the stock market. So you know when they say the market did this today and the market went up today or the market went down today, they're usually talking about what the Dow Jones did the stock market, that's the Dow. Then you got equities. Equities is just ownership in a company. This is equities, AKA stock. So some people say, what's equities? It's just stock, it's shares. Shares, stock, equities, these words are all pretty interchangeable. Last up on this side of the list, we got ETF. This stands for exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds are a collection of stocks that track and index over time. These typically return a 12 percent rate of return on the high side. Not a bad thing to invest in ETFs. Moving right along at the top of this list, you got fiduciary. A fiduciary acts with your best interests in mind. Make sure that you're working with someone who is a fiduciary and not a fiduci bag. See what I did there? There we go, fiduciary. Fixed income. Fixed income is a security that pays a specific interest rate. This is typically known as bonds. Fixed income, typically known as bonds, can also be preferred stock. Next up, we got growth stock. Growth stock is a strategy to invest in rapid growing stocks. That's growth stock. Then we got hedge fund. This is usually something that the ultra, ultra, ultra wealthy invest in. A hedge fund is a strategy used by wealthy investors to pool funds to beat the market. That's a hedge fund. Then you got index. Index are just indicators of the market. Like we talked about the Dow Jones of the top 30 blue chip companies in America. That's an index. But the best known index is the S&P 500, which is an index of the top 500 largest companies in America. So that's index is just an indicator 
of the market. You always hear, I'm index investing. I'm index investing. That's just mirroring the market by indexing the market. Then you got IPO. This stands for Initial Public Offering. This is when a private company is about to go public. They do an IPO. That's IPO. Then you got IRA. This stands for Individual Retirement Account. These are typically tax favored accounts, tax advantage individual retirement account, IRA. Then you got junk bonds. These are low rated, high return, highly risky bonds, junk bonds. So someone says, yeah, I'm a junk bond investor. It's like, good luck with that, buddy. Good luck. Cool. That's a junk bond. Then you got KPI. KPI stands for key performance indicator or a company's long term growth trajectory. KPI key performance indicator. Say that three times fast. Then you got long-term investing. This is, I'm a huge advocate of long-term investing. This is just a buy and hold strategy. When someone says like, what's your strategy? What's your, what's your, what's your secret to investing? It's like, I'm just in the market and I don't sell and I keep my money in the market and over time, the market will go up. Long-term investing, buy and hold investing. There's no secret sauce with that and it works. That's long-term investing. Then you got mutual fund. A mutual fund is money pooled from people invested in multiple stocks in bonds or both. So I highly recommend that people, when they start investing, they do not select certain stocks. You might get lucky, you might not. If you invest in a large pool of funds or a mutual fund, you'll be playing the entire market. This is diversification and asset allocation all in one in a mutual fund. Sometimes this will be called an index fund or an index mutual fund if you use an index strategy of using an indicator of the market, like an S&P 500. That's a mutual fund, index fund. These terms are kind of interchangeable. The key terminology here is sometimes mutual funds are more expensive, index funds are less expensive. So there you go, save that money. Moving right along, you got the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is a computerized stock exchange, and this is very, very heavily tech-centric. So you got Apple, you got Google, you got Microsoft, you got types of companies like this that are all on the NASDAQ, these are tech companies. Moving right along, you got the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange. This is the largest stock exchange in the world. Read up if you don't know about the New York Stock Exchange. Then you got option. An option is a contractual agreement between two parties to a buy or sell or a call or a put. So I know people that specialize in options, they're options traders. This is very difficult and I don't recommend it for the individual investor. Stick to mutual funds and index funds, not necessarily options, but now the more you know. Options, there you go. Then you got portfolio. This is basically like when someone says, how's your portfolio looking? This is just like what you got. This is your collection of stocks. This is your collection of assets. What's your portfolio looking like? Is it up, is it down? It's just what you own, that's your portfolio. Then you got prospectus. A prospectus is actually very important. Very few people read a company's prospectus, but I highly recommend it if you're gonna be investing. It might be boring, it might be long, but this is the definition. It's a document of a company's financial history. That's the prospectus. Warren Buffett usually recommends always reading the company's prospectus before you invest. Then you got quarterly earnings. Quarterly earnings are just what it shows. A company's earnings every quarter. How many quarters are in a year? Well, four. How many quarters are in a game? Well, four. So there you go. Company's earnings by quarter. That's quarterly earnings. Then you got REITs. I'm a huge advocate of, v of REITs. What are REITs? What are real estate investment trusts? Real estate investment trusts. So this enables you to invest in real estate without actually having to have a mortgage and owning your home. So I'm a huge advocate of renting, but I invest in real estate or REITs. Then you got risk and return. This is basically the whole thing with investing. The higher the risk, the higher the return. The lower the risk, the lower the return. Like we talked about stocks and bonds in your asset allocation. The more bonds you have, they're more of like a stabilizing force in your portfolio, typically the lower the return. The more stocks you have in your portfolio, typically the higher the return. So that's risk and reward. Just like in anything with life, the more you risk, the higher the reward. The less you risk, the less the reward. It's funny how that works sometimes. Then you got the S&P 500, which we've discussed. It stands for the Standard and Poor's 500. A lot of people know about the S&P 500, but they don't know that it stands for the Standard and Poor's 500. That's the 500 largest companies in America that are on the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is an index or an indicator of the overall stock market. Check that out. 
Moving right along, you got stock. This is share. This is equity. This is owning a piece of a company. We cover that in equities. Stock, you got stock in a company. The stock is growing. That's stock. Here we go. You got stock, you got bond. Then you got the ticker symbol. This is basically just the stock symbol. So when you say, all right, like how's Apple doing today? Well, you don't just look under Apple. You don't just look at a picture of an Apple. Apple's ticker symbol is AAPL. Okay, so that's Apple. That's their ticker symbol. Then you got time horizon. This is basically the time one plans to hold an investment. Like what's your time horizon? Like for me, my time horizon, I'm just holding. I'm a buy and hold investor. I might cash out in my 50s and my 60s and my 70s, who knows, but I've been investing since I've been 27 years old, right? I'm investing for almost 13 years now. My buy and hold strategy is a long-term strategy. That's the time horizon. So there you go. Then you got uptick. Uptick is an increase in price from the last transaction. So I got in at 50 and now I'm at 60. It's uptick 10 points. So cool, I'm up 10. That's the uptick. Volatility, this is like, oh crazy, how crazy is the market? How crazy is the market today? How much action is going on in the market? This is actually calculated by something known as the VIX, V-I-X, the VIX. This is volatility in the market. This is the expected price fluctuation in the market. That's the VIX, that's volatility. And then we got the weighted average market cap. This is just a fancy, fancy, complicated word for basically the larger the company, the higher the score on the weighted average market cap. I needed to use a W and I threw that one in there. That's not a term that you might hear all that often. That's a W. I know, so same thing, I needed to find an X. I was like, what the hell is going on with X? I found something called XRT. To be honest, I've never even used this term before. This is me being honest with you, but XRT is basically what's called your X rights. This is basically when a buyer can't buy more stock at a cheaper price. That's not a term you'll hear often, but we had to find an X, so we found the X. There it is for you. Then you got yield, this is the annual percentage rate of return on your capital. Like what did the bond yield? Well, the bond yielded 3.6%. Uh, that was the yield. What, what did the stock yield? The stock yielded 9.7%. Cool, that's the yield. And last but not least, we got Z, which stands for zero. Why did I pick the word zero? Well, I'll tell you why. Only 55% of Americans are invested in the stock market. So what does that mean? 45% of people watching this are simply just not invested in the stock market. Well, you know how much money you can make from the stock market if you're not invested? Well, the answer is zero. So I would highly encourage you to look more into the stock market. I hope that this stock market terminology helped and broke down money in a language that you can understand. I want to see you win with money and it starts with understanding the basics of the stock market. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have not seen my episode on investing in the stock market then versus now, check that out right here. And if you have not subscribed to Valuetainment Economics, please subscribe below and smash that like button while you're at it. And last but not least, you can't invest in the stock market unless you save that money. All we talk is 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 money.